Hey y'all, it's Betsy with Happily Ever After Etc. And welcome back to another Cricut video. So today I have a bit of a two for one deal. If you are a Cricut fan, stay tuned because I have made like eight different SVGs and we're going to put them on several different things. So we're cutting out iron-on, it's going on this shirt. We are cutting out infusible ink to put on a Cricut infusible ink shirt and infusible ink did you just see that fall over it like attacked me to go on a cosmetics bag or a pen bag so same svgs cutting them out three different applications but the best part they are all chinford related so if you are a fan of the rookie if you are hashtag team chinford then um this is for you. You're welcome. I'm a huge fan, like way bigger than I should be. It is my current obsession and I am in a Facebook group. Y'all know who you are. <sighs> We've been talking about shirts. So I finally bit the bullet and I decided I needed some Chinford shirts for Tuesday night, rookie nights. So if you are here for Cricut, use whatever SVGs you like. But if you are here for Chinford, I've got all the fun SVGs. You can download them down below. You can put them on shirts. You can put them on pin bags. You can make pillows. You can make totes. Make whatever you like, y'all. I, I made three. There's like eight designs. So I hope you enjoy. This should be a fun video. I could have broken it up into three different videos, one per shirt and one for the cosmetics bag, but I figured It'd be kind of fun to show you how to take the same SVGs and make them multiple ways in the same video. So that is what we're doing. And I hope you like it. If you stick around all the way to the end, leave me a comment on how much you love Tenford. Let's get started. Now that we have open Cricut Design Space, let's get started by uploading our SVGs. We're gonna click Upload. Upload image and now go ahead and navigate to wherever you have saved those Chinford SVGs and uh, there's a few of them. I was going to make one shirt and then I went ahead and went insane, made several designs. Slightly obsessed if you haven't figured that out by now, but that's okay. There are much worse things to be obsessed with, I am sure. So we have everything grouped. So you can come in here and turn off each design one at a time. The largest group here, I'm not sure why it's in a large group, but either way. So, there we go, first design, Lucy Lessons. Now here is the thing. Within this little group here, we can go ahead and weld Lucy Lessons, which is, let me, let me bring you in, uh, the pink. That can all be one layer. Okay. And thus into the, and hashtag Chen for it, all the black here, that can be welded. And those are all in groups. So now we have Lucy Lesson and thus endeth the Hashtag Chinford. And so these two things can be grouped or they can be edited. At the moment, they are overlapping. So if I are if I were to weld this, let me do that for you real quick so you can see. If I weld this, it will make it all one layer. See? So now I can cut this entire thing out of one color one sheet of iron-on, one sheet of infusible ink, and it will all cut together. If you want to cut this out of two different colors, which is how it's been designed, then you want to leave it in two different sections, okay? So we can either group these. There you go. It's this button. If I'm going to cut this out of uh, iron-on, and the iron-on can overlap, then we're good to go. This, this piece right here can be cut. If I was going to cut it out of infusible ink, infusible ink cannot overlap and that needs a different process altogether. So let's go ahead, go through all of our pieces here, get them all situated. 
into new groups and then I will show you that process. I'm going to do one infusible ink shirt and one iron-on shirt and I will show you the process for each one of those so that you can see the difference. For now I am just going through the main group here and I'm going to weld all the lake colors together because I do want to cut everything out of separate sheets. Again, if you just want to go simple and cut the entire design out of one color, then that will be the easiest way to do it. And you can go ahead and just weld the entire thing. Now it would be harder on these two with the images because you will lose those letters if you weld them together. Those two need to be uh, those two need to be separate. Getting to the end of the groups here. Grouping them together is less important. Um, it just kind of helps keep everything organized. But other than that, it, if you're cutting it out of different sections, it doesn't really matter if it's grouped or not. All right, now we've got everything set according to design in its own group. So, go ahead and turn off the ones I'm not making today I will probably make all of these at some point but today I am making three designs these three so Two of these are going to be infusible ink and one is going to be iron-on. So this one here is going to be iron-on. And since it is completely separate, we don't need to do anything else. This one is ready to go. We will resize it, but other than that, it is ready to cut. This one as well is completely separate. We can cut this out and it is already going to cut out of two different sheets because the colors for the black and the pink are separate. But this guy needs a little work if we're going to cut it out of infusible ink because the black and the pink layers cannot oversect, connect like this. They can't interconnect. So there's the layer. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to copy I'm going to paste this guy because we are going to need to preserve the letters here. We're going to keep the letters and group them completely as they are. Okay, but what we need to do is we need to cut out everywhere that the letters are of this dolphin so that the letters can smoothly fit into our dolphin. So for this little group here, what I'm going to do is I'm going, come on, there we go. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit slice. Perfect. So now as you can see, slicing him has given us several different layers. It's given us a layer of this black section that was cut. It's going to give us the same thing in pink going to give us the dolphin and it's going to give us the word. So basically anywhere that the two layers overlapped, it has sliced. So what we need is only this back dolphin layer. So these other three layers we can go ahead and delete. And now we have our dolphin and we have our words. And if we bring this over, is going to connect right here. So now when we cut these out of our two infusible ink sheets, 
we can combine them in the real world, press them onto our shirt, and they will not uh, interfere with each other because they are actually cut in those places. And by shirt, I mean pencil bag, because I'm making a pencil bag. Well, you could make a shirt. Whatever you want to put your infusible ink on is what you can use this for. So now we are going to go ahead. We have our two infusible ink sheets. And we're going to go ahead and make this guy different colors because we want that to be iron on. Uh, and it'll be easier if we can just completely set everything to cut without, oops, that's the wrong chamfered, without having to come back to the drawing board. All right, last step before we move on is sizing these babies. So I have a Cricut infusible ink pouch here. And it is nine inches wide by seven and a half inches tall. So let's go ahead and size this guy to 7.5 inches wide. And that will fit nice and big on our piece. And then we need to decide on um, how big we want our decals for our shirts. Prefer you can size it completely up to you. But I prefer my decals to be about nine inches wide. Most female shirts, that seems to be a decent size. You can read it, but it's not too big. So I'm just going to resize both of those to nine inches wide. And then we are going to come up here. I'm going to use my Maker 3 because I am going to be using Smart Iron On. And then our infusible ink, we will put on a cutting mat. So. Click make it. We are going to have to click multiple ways since we are using multiple solutions. So this guy is without mat. This guy we are going to do on a mat. So because this decal is larger, it actually wants me to cut it on a large cutting mat, which I don't want to do. I'm cutting it out of infusible ink. There's no reason to waste all this space. So we're actually going to go ahead and fix that real quick by slicing it. So I find the easiest way to do this is just to get a square. Now we're going to intersect it with this piece. Slice it. Delete all our gray. And regroup. And group this one. And there we go. Now it should all um, kind of squish onto that mat, which is what we need. So without mat, on mat, there we go. See, now everything fits on a 12 by 12. Without mat, and last but not least, on mat. Perfect. Continue. Now we need to switch over to our Maker 3 and get that prepped. All right, so I have prepped our infusible ink sheets. I'm using a black and a pink and purple kind of leopard print. Keep in mind, if you've never used infusible ink before, that these are ink sheets. That means this is ink. You need to be using dry, <laughs> clean hands. You want to put it on your cutting mat. And then I always use my brayer to push it down because the infusible ink is um, has a tendency to have bubbles and it needs to be firmly pressed flat so that everything cuts smooth. So we have two sheets, the black and the cheetah. As you can see, the black always looks kind of brownish gray. Everything is going to look duller right out of the box. That's okay. It will look bright and shiny black once it has been heat pressed 
onto your shirt or your bag or whatever it is you're making. The same with your colors. They are always going to be uh, duller and less vibrant when they are on your ink sheet. So we're going to get started. So for this first one, I am going to tell it we are cutting an infusible ink sheet. We will cut both of our infusible ink sheets and then we will switch to the smart iron. Smart iron. The smart iron on, that was the English I was trying to tell you. All right, infusible ink transfer sheet. Now, if you've never done this, it is going to tell you, make sure, make sure that mirror is turned on. If you cut this right side up, then your design will be wrong side over on your shirt. So go ahead and click that mirror, mirror button right here. If you forgot, you can hit edit and mirror, but go ahead and mirror it. You wanna make sure it is ink side up. Now I'm always going to set my pressure to more because I just find that works best for me. I'm going to load it in with our fine point blade. Once it is loaded, we will go ahead and hit go. All right. We'll let this entire mat cut and then we'll do the second one. So there's our first mat. We're gonna go ahead and set this aside to do our second one. Now, on Cricut Design Space, you may have noticed that I did add another design. So this second black mat here, we're going to skip. I'm going to have to reload that first mat. Instead, you're going to come down here and you're going to once again use infusible ink. Make sure that mirror is on. It is. Our ink is, material is ink side up. I am going to braid this a little bit more right before we start because this mat wasn't as sticky. Load it in. Set this to more. Go ahead and hit start. So while that's going, I'm going to take this off the mat. I'm not going to weed everything or cut it apart. I'm just going to flip it over and remove the infusible ink so that I can reset this mat for the next part. All three designs. Now for our second mat here, let's double check. It needs to be at least five by about three and a half. I have this little bit here, which hopefully will be big enough. Yeah, three and a half by, it's about three and a half by six, so that's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and cut it loose. Worked out perfectly. It's almost like I planned it. And now I'm going to place this in the top right corner because that is where my design is on the cutting mat in design space. Lay it down, get all these bubbles out. and let it know we're doing infusible ink. Let it 
more pressure. The mirror is on. So we can go ahead and load it. All right. Dun, da, da, da. Upside down, but you get the idea. So we're gonna go ahead and remove this. And again, place it upside down. Make sure your surface is dry and clean so you don't accidentally put your infusible ink and in, say a coffee cup ring or a Diet Coke ring of condensation. I may or may not be speaking from experience. It's just not worth it. <laughs> All right. Phase one complete. Now we have cut um, all of our infusible ink. So I'm going to put these away. We don't need our cutting mats for the smart vinyl. If you are or smart vinyl, smart iron on, if you're just using regular iron on, you can of course use a cutting mat for that. All right, step two here. When you're unloading these mats, anything like infusible ink or cardstock, um, you should always be pulling your cutting mat backwards, rolling it off of your material as opposed to rolling your material off your cutting mat. It just helps to prevent crimping and folding and creases. All right. Cooking with gas, y'all. Two more rolls. And these smart materials are always so fast. So fast. All right, let's go back up to the top. And this top one, we are going to do smart iron. Perfect. All right, so as always, we want to load our iron-on in with the shiny side down. This shiny side here, or the clear side, is the carrier sheet. So that is why we want our mirror to be on. We need to cut into the back of the material. Cutting into the carrier sheet will not help us. So go ahead and load this in. The roll holder is not necessary, but it does make life easier. So. All right, we are all set. Smart iron on, mirror is on, more pressure. I'm gonna load it into the machine and it is going to pull it back and measure that we have enough material on our roll left, which we have more than enough. And then once it's measured, we can hit go. Perfect. So now before we eject it, we're just gonna slice across. There we go. Now we can take our entire roll away. We can put this back in our box and load the next roll in. Make out, stop crying. That's not Chenford. I don't know what it is, y'all. I love Tamara. I hope she is in way more stuff. All right, so our only piece left is this hashtag uh, Chenford for the iron on. It is mirrored. We are going to grab smart iron on here. Set it to more, and we are good to go. This is a brand new roll. Dun, dun, dun. Chinford! I love it. All right, 
So weeding is of course the process of removing all of the negative space from a design, which for our vinyl means using a weeding tool. But for our infusible ink, we're simply going to use our fingers. So we'll cut our designs apart. For this, we do want the word. So we'll come in here very carefully, leaving the carrier sheet, remove every bit that we don't need. So the insides, the outsides, leaving just our word. And then the carrier sheet is what we'll kind of use at the end to, for lack of better words, glue all the pieces together between the two different color infusible inks. And while you can use a weeding tool for this, as you can see, it's a thicker material. You don't need it. It's usually easier with your fingers. Your fingers are clean and dry and a weeding tool is harsh. So if you do need a weeding tool to get into something a little small, go for it, but just be very careful because a weeding tool can very easily rip or cut this delicate infusible ink and nobody needs that. All right, so now we've got all those little parts off. Go ahead and uh, remove the outside. How that ripped right there it doesn't matter because this is excess but that's what I'm talking about we don't want that to happen with our letters I don't know how I would ever need such a tiny piece but this is a block so let's save it maybe I'll need a heart a leopard print heart or something you never know it's material I could use it for something else a vinyl hoarder Iron on hoarder, infusible ink hoarder. There we go. Ten for dun -da -da -da. Oh, This is gonna be so cute. All right, so now all of this is trash. We are going to go ahead and I will weed the rest of our cheetah, all of our black letters and our two vinyl pieces with a weeding tool and I will be back. Okay, so we are all set. Everything is weeded. As you can see, the larger pieces like this bad boy are very easy to weed and put together because it's just spliced. We just have our three pieces that we tape on our shirt, line them up. We are good to go with heating this up, pressing it onto our shirt. I am using a infusible ink shirt for this guy in the baseball style. I thought that would be super cute with this design. And I've not made one of these. I've done plenty of the white t-shirts um, and the gray ones, but I'm excited to try this. And I think this is going to be super cute. Then I have our iron on and y'all did not tell me I cut out the entire um make out stop crime out of black iron on it's going on a black shirt y'all like that wouldn't work so I recut it out in white same process different material now I have a black version that I'm gonna have to find something to put it on because it's so cute last but not least we have our <laughs> our special designs these are from a Chenford Fanatics group on Facebook. Hi, y'all, that I am uh, friends with. These are kind of inside jokes. So if you don't understand them, that's fine. Come join us. We're insane, but we have fun. And I just wanted to show you that this is how it looks once you have merged the two infusible inks. So we can't, like with iron-on, we can't put one piece on 
and then put a second piece on. All our infusible inks need to go in one layer. And so I basically, you can see I've spliced the back carrier sheets together and I've spliced all of our infusible ink sheets together so that everything is on one design. We can put this right on. I've got a little cosmetics bag. I'm gonna use it for a pencil bag. Um, we can put this right on here. So we're gonna put this one on the front. And then our second design for Lucy, one for Tim, one for Lucy, of course, will go on the opposite side. But we're gonna do that in a minute. We're gonna start with this shirt. So I've set my Easy Press to 385, 40 seconds, which is the heat press requirements for this t-shirt. You can look up the Cricut heat guide. I'll put that in the description, but it tells you all of the requirements depending on what material you're using and which blank you're using. So obviously, I could grab my big heat press and heat up the whole design, but I didn't want to heat up both heat presses, so I'm just going to move this one. It's fine. We'll go ahead, we'll do the top, then we'll move and do the bottom. So with infusible ink, it's important to cover the entire design. Press down firmly. Do not move your heat press in any direction or things will get hazy. And this, I just checked, it's not going to cover everything, so we're going to even do quadrants. So we're going to press... Place it down carefully, hit our button, and now press firmly for 40 seconds. I've never had to do an infusible ink piece in this many quadrants. Usually two is enough and you can find a good divide. So if we start having issues, I've got another shirt. We'll break out the big bad boy. Do it all in one fell swoop like we should have but i think this will work i've done an entire makeup bag with my mini easy press before and as long as you're steady it came out fine just not a shirt all right lift straight up move it over and i'm not pushing hard but i'm just putting steady firm pressure downwards All right, we are going to move this aside and let it cool before we unpeel it. You'll notice that the longer it sits, if everything is working properly, the infusible ink carrier sheet where the ink was will start to lift up automatically. And it does look like that's happening, so that's usually a very good sign. All right. Here's our cosmetics bag. Now with this guy, we're doing a design on both sides. So I have put a thick sheet of uh, cardstock, I guess you would call it, in here to stop bleeding because we don't want the ink to go all the way through. And then I took a second precaution, which is I put my mini Easy Press mat inside of here so that we know for sure the ink won't bleed through. So I'm gonna set this whole thing right on a mat. Double mat, double protection, we're good to go. And let's line it up. So here's our design. Tim Bradford, Hot Smooth Dolphin. That's what he is. Okay, I didn't, I don't make the rules. All right, once we've got it lined up, start to stick it down. I always go from the center, press outwards. Our carrier sheet acts as a uh, tape for the most part, but I have my heat resistant tape and I always do at least the edges. This will be a little harder because the carrier sheet is so large, but it's okay. And our Cricut heat press guide has said, this baby, our cosmetics bag, needs 385 for 60 seconds, so. I have adjusted the heat press. Make sure it covers the whole design. And I try to avoid the zipper. There, press down. Oop, I slid, hopefully that's okay. Always try to go straight down and straight up with infusible ink. It looks all right, but we are going to let this settle before we flip it over and do the other side. 
So go ahead and uh, honestly, it's coming up pretty fast. Maybe we don't need to let it settle so much. Let's see. Ooh, a little hazy, not bad, but just at the top. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna see if I can't get that top bit to transfer a little better. That might not be super easy with uh, the pattern. I really don't wanna mess this up. Let me see how this top bit just hasn't transferred. can't line it up perfectly, it will not work. This may be a giant mistake. We'll find out. Y'all will all know before me. Because you're watching from the future. That's close enough. I don't want to do any more and mess it up. I think we have enough color up there that it makes sense and the rest looks perfect. So if you have to do a little doctoring like this, I have one of these just Cricut um, heat protectant mats because you never want to put heat directly on the design once it is on the piece without something like this or freezer paper or um, a sheet cardstock even in between the two pieces. All right, so the rest of this should be cool enough. I'm gonna flip it over and do the other side. I think that the dolphin had problems at the top because we avoided that zipper and it created a divot. So on the other side, let's not do that. Now. Lucy Chen, Fist of Justice, our queen, our rookie Chenford queen, is our most difficult design. And that is because the letters here fit perfectly into the background with the way we did our offset path and our splice. That's exactly what we want. We want that to happen for our design. But in the meantime, the letters keep popping up in a way that's just not my favorite. So I'm just using the dry, clean end of my weeding tool, pushing all the corners down. You're in the home stretch. I'm gonna try not to lose letters all night. I'm just gonna have to see the S coming up. We just gotta be able to flip it over and get it in position, and then we can heat it. We'll never have to worry about it again. I lost the light last night when I was cutting these. So, if I had been able to press them right after I weeded them, probably would have had less problems. Right, we're gonna try. Perfect. Oh, that's close. 
recluse. Okay. So the part I'm a little worried about is actually the hashtag Chinford at the bottom because it is right on the seam. Let's try to get it on the bag a little more. And if I have to go in with my mini easy press and really do that, we can. We're gonna push the whole design down first and then we'll check it out before we pull everything up. Cover the whole design. I'm going to do extra firm straight down pressure on this one to try to get everything to flatten out, all the nooks and crannies, top of the zipper, bottom of the seam. We'll see especially because placing the dolphin back down to redo was one big piece that's usually doable. Pushing little letters back down into place is next to impossible. So of course, this is one reason why I do like my easy press. It has the nice big handle. You can push down even pressure and it evenly presses the whole plate. Of course, that doesn't always work with things like this bag with the zipper if your item isn't flat, but that is what it is. We make it work. All right, straight up. Perfect. And you see how everything's lifting up? That is an excellent sign. Oh yeah, okay, that worked gangbusters. I always try not to put too much pressure so that things don't get shifted when I'm pushing, but more pressure always works best. I don't know why I can't learn that lesson. All right, so now I'm going to reset my easy press to 315 and 30 seconds so that we can do our iron-on shirt. It needs less heat. Typically, I will do iron on first and then bump it up for infusible ink, but I had all of my infusible ink ready to go, so. Don't have a special Cricut shirt for this. I just have a shirt from good old Mall of, Mall of Walls. Got it all smoothed out. Let's go over it, get all that dog hair off. I already did this once, but again, last night. So obviously dog hair is settled on it in the meantime. Perfect. You never want to skip that step if you have pets everywhere because the dog hair will go under your iron on. You'll never get it off. All right, this is still setting up. That's okay. We're just going to use it as an iron. I want to get out all those wrinkles. Perfect. Oh, that's going to be crisp. So I always try to go about four fingers down from the neck of my shirt. And then we want the E to be just off center. Perfect. Dun -dun -dun. Oh, 
honestly think it needs to be up a little bit with this being a v-neck instead of a u-neck i feel like the center needs to be higher or this is going to be on my stomach we we'll go with two fingers that looks better All right, so I'm going to go ahead. I think this will fit over the whole thing. There we go. Firm but even pressure. Not too hard. Typically don't need to go psycho hard on this one like you do with the infusible ink. Now watch I say that and I'll be wrong. You know, it, it becomes one of those things when you do a lot of Cricut shirts or materials that nine times out of 10, everything follows the same pattern. But you know, you use a new shirt, a new material, and it needs a slightly different pattern. This is the same shirt that I did the iridescent foil on for my Halloween-y shirts though. You guys have never done that iridescent foil the blue iridescent foil reads as orange on black it's amazing for halloween well it's amazing if you like orange but it's amazing for halloween and uh and this worked perfectly for that shirt so going with the same formula i liked how it fits so i went back and got another shirt for another blank make sure for iron on that you flip it over and you want to hit the front and the back. And then we will start revealing these bad boys. Turn off my easy press because should be done with it. I'm going to move this guy out of the way. And let's see what we got. Oh, that's crisp. It's crisp and beautiful. This is all I ever wanted in my life. I'm gonna wear this like every day, you guys. It's so crisp. Oh my God, it's everything I dreamed of. Oh my God. I'm sorry, I am slightly freaking out right now. And by slightly, I mean a lot. Okay. I love this on the baseball tee. Oh my goodness. Now of all the SVGs I did, this one was not my design. This was a design someone shared with me. I searched and searched and searched for the SVG and could not find one. So I did not make it exact. I didn't want to steal anyone's design, but I did want to wear it. So I went ahead and made a similar design. Um, I'm not selling these. They're for fun, they're for the fandom, so hopefully that's okay. If it is your design, sell the SVG and I will buy it. Ah! <laughs> I'm literally going to go put that on immediately after this. I'm probably wearing it in the intro of this video. Oh, that's good. Oh, her head's a little funky, but not funky enough. Now the black on this pattern, a little harder to read than I would like. Maybe white would have been better, but it was on a white background. So, oh, it's so cute. I'm gonna use this so much. <laughs> oh. One day, if I am no longer the rookie is no longer on in 50 years and I look back on my life and I wonder what I've done. I don't know. But if, if a TV show has ever given you this much happiness, that can only be a good thing. All right, last but not least, 
Let's hope this worked. We're going to start with the top. So the edges seem to have a problem. Don't know why, but we're not going to just pull willy nilly. Maybe it wasn't quite as wide as I thought. Yeah, I did need my wide easy press. Should have just heated both up. Okay, got our easy press mini heated up. We are going to hit these bad boys. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's see about this side. I think it must just not have been quite wide enough to hit that side because it should just peel up right like this. I know people like just rip these off, but I am just such a cautious baby. gives me like pink ladies grease vibes is that just me i know it's the colors but still i have a pink leather jacket something tells me black boots jeans where i'm gonna wear this outfit i don't know around my house for my dogs maybe rookie watch party anyone Come on over, the dogs will make popcorn. Yeah, that's it. All right. Yes. Obsessed is not a strong enough word. All right, give me a second to calm down and I will show you everything. All right, dun da da dun. Win, win, triple win. And the only thing I'm not a fan of is how hard Lucy Chen, Fist of Justice, is to read. I'm thinking, maybe I wanted, I wanted the whole, you know, cheetah print, black vibes like we had here and we had here. But this, like, it's a little hard to read, but it's only two letters. I'm thinking, if this works, I'll, like, post it on Instagram. But I'm thinking I'm just going to cut out Lucy Chin Fist of Justice with this pink iron on and just pop it on top. Now, the only reason I'm not sure about that is, like I told y'all, it's not great to um, go over infusible ink. So I'm not sure how doing that will affect the cheetah. The only other thing I could do is use an adhesive foil that does not have to be heat pressed. So I'm not going to worry about it today. Maybe if I do that, I will do a whole second video on uh, rectifying a problem of this nature. Leave a comment down below if you would like to see that. But for today, I'm going to go put my shirt on. Which one? Which one should I put on? I'm going to put them both on. I'm going to see which one I like best. Whichever one I like best, you'll see in the intro. You've already seen it. Either way, I hope you liked these. I know if you're not a rookie fan, this is not for you. If you're not a Jenford fan, this is not for you. But there seems to be an entire army of us. So you're welcome. Bye, y'all.